All right. We're set to kick off right now. Tennessee won the toss. It looks to defer. So the balls will kick off to Louisiana Tech. Eric Newman will be deep along with Eric Franklin. Will Hoyt lets it fly. It's into the end zone, and Louisiana Tech wisely decides not to come out of the checkerboard area. I think Louisiana we, Tech is really a team, Terrence, that will, their theory is will play anybody, anywhere, anytime. And, and they have done that. They have played in some of the best venues in the country and against some of the best teams in the country, and they've won some big games. Well, example, last week they played Miami, they played Tennessee tonight, Fresno State next, and then they take on Auburn. It's first down and 10 to go. Quarterback is Donald Allen. Ryan Motes is the tailback, one of the best in the entire country. Franklin rolls and throws too high for his intended receiver, and that was Eric Newman. A little bit of a surprise. We expected Motes perhaps early to take the load here. They tried to surprise Tennessee with a pass. Justin Harrell and Omar Gaither are applying the pressure on him. Louisiana Tech's starting lineup. Miller, Lips, Stewart, Lindsey, and Lang up front. And the quarterback is Donald Allen, Ryan Motes. Wide receivers are Holland, Cosby, and Davis. Tight end Aaron Katz. Allen hands off in the middle to Motes, and he gets maybe a couple of yards. That's about it, two yards. So it'll bring up a third down situation for the Bulldogs. Tennessee defensively starting Paris Harrelson, Jesse Mahalona, Justin Harrell, and Carlton Neal. Omar Gaither starts outside tonight at linebacker. Jason Mitchell replaces the injured Kevin Simon in the middle and Kevin Burnett. Then you have Jonathan Wade, Jonathan Hefney, Jason Allen, and Corey Campbell gets a start tonight at safety. Allen working his signals. Tennessee not showing any blitz, but there was movement. Lang is down. It looked like Lang, Jordan Lang, was in motion. By the way, this uh, offensive line for Louisiana Tech is rather large. Ball start, number 55 on the offense, five yards, remains third down. In fact, the right guard, Marcus Lindsay, weighs 375 pounds. You're going to see the right tackle flinch right there. That'll draw a flag every time. So now they look at a third and 13. Definitely a throwing situation for the Bulldogs. Tennessee gets some pressure on him. A lot of pressure. He's down inside the five. Justin Harrell led the pack along with Jonathan Hefty. And a player is down for Louisiana Tech. It appears to be the quarterback, Allen. Lost 12 on that play. And that's a good defensive play by Tennessee. They're trying to set up the screen to Moats. Tennessee plays it well. Allen has nowhere to go. And he seems to be in some pain right now as the training staff looks over him. Jonathan Hefney will be standing in deep receiving position. When play is resumed here tonight, it's a gorgeous night in East Tennessee temperature is 76 degrees just a very light breeze not enough to affect the passing or the kicking game in any way and Matt Butler is their punter when the play resumes now they're going to get Allen on his feet and that is a good sign they're going to get him off the field right now but he is walking on his own so very good news right there Louisiana Tech is located in Ruston, Louisiana. It's a enrollment of about 11,000. Take another look at it here and see if we, uh, Terrence, can determine exactly how he got hurt. Oh, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Right now, Butler is standing by. Kicking out of his end zone. It's... Thirty seconds 
seven yards on the kick. Epney does a good job of fielding the kick. He's a young returner. That's what you want him to do first and foremost. Tennessee so, gets great field position off of that punt. With the score, nothing, nothing in the first quarter. You're watching college football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Back in Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Brett Schaefer gets the starting nod at quarterback tonight, and Cedric Houston is the starting tailback. They give it to Cedric. He's got a hole at right guard and tackle, and he drives through down to about the 36-yard line. Barry Robertson, linebacker, made the stop for the Bulldogs. Take a look at the Tennessee offensive lineup tonight. Munoz, Smith, Resford, Douglas, and Sears. They have been really outstanding. Schaefer, Cedric Houston, Corey Anderson at fullback, Jason Swain, Tony Brown starting here tonight at receiver. Schaefer may be changing the play. The line of scrimmage appears to be doing so. Drops back, wants to throw a timing pattern down the sideline. was the intended receiver, made a good effort, but was out of bounds. Good effort by Tony Brown, but like you said, out of bounds. I think Brent Schaefer needs to throw this ball a little earlier. Throw it toward the back of Tony Brown's helmet, give him an opportunity to make the play. Brent Schaefer started at quarterback, but Ainge, of course, will play. They will continue their pattern of alternating the quarterbacks as they have done in the first two ball games. And that goes for the tailbacks as well. Tennessee going to have to call a timeout. The game clock winding down on them. Excuse me, play clock. I'm out. Yeah, they Tennessee. do have to call a timeout. That's their first of the night, but they do have to call a timeout because simply had no time left on the play clock. It's 0-0, first quarter, Louisiana Tech in Tennessee. You're watching college football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. All right, time back in here at Neyland Stadium. Tennessee and Louisiana Tech scoreless. We're in the first quarter early. Schaefer operating at quarterback. Cedric Houston remains at tailback. Two receivers set to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. And it's run all the way, and it's a disaster for Tennessee. Jamel Cage was not fooled in any way on that one. And the 290-pound in blew in and blew the play up. Louisiana Tech changed their philosophy on defense for this year. They went to the 3-4, which would allow them to be able to put pressure on the quarterback, bring some of those linebackers and secondary guys in blitzes, and they did on this play. Nowhere for Brent Schaefer to go. Beats the block of Justin Reed. Big play for Louisiana Tech. All right, standing back is Dustin Colquitt. And Corey Brazil is set to receive, standing on his 10-yard line. Tennessee he wound up fourth and 16. And here's the punt. It is a mile high. Signaling for a fair catch and makes it right at the 10-yard line. 38-yard punt by Dustin Colquitt, who's, of course, one of the best in America. So Louisiana Tech now goes to work on offense after both teams failed to do anything in their first possession. Both wound up losing big yardage. And, you know, that was one of the questions after the big victory at Florida. Does Tennessee have a hangover from that ball game? Or do they come back in this ball game with a lot of life? And on their first drive, they seem not to be the same team. Well, Donald Allen went out with an injury. We don't know the extent of that just yet, but we do know that he has been replaced by Matt Kubik, who is 6'3", 209-pound junior. He hands off to his favorite man, Moats, and Tennessee is waiting for that one all the way. Lost a yard. Louisiana Tech finds themselves in an unusual situation. Every year since 1996, they've had a quarterback throw for 4,000 yards in the season. This year, they have quarterbacks, Bob, on the roster that starting the season had never thrown a pass in a well, ball game. The last two starters, they had Tim Rattay and Luke McCallan, who are both now in the NFL, of course. 
So it brings up now a second down. And about 11 yards to go for a first. Kubik airs it out, and it is incomplete. Now a late, late flag comes in. Davis was the intended receiver. Jonathan Wade was defending. The official who was right on top of the play did not call interference, but it appears the official about 20 yards downfield did call pass interference. I By the way, it's the Southeastern Conference crew headed up by Jay Vines, the referee. Interference, number four on the defense. 15 yards in the previous spot. First time, First time. Jonathan Wade is going to be beat on the play. The, the throw allows him to make up some ground, and I think at the last moment he may have bumped the receiver with his arm. Watch his right arm. Actually, it's a pretty good call, I think. A little contact. He never looked back for the ball. Never looked back for the football. Yeah, they will give it to you more often than not if you turn and look. Mitchell has still not picked up his flag out here, or has he dropped another one? This is the first sideline warning to Louisiana Tech. The first yes. sideline warning. That was the Tech. call. He dropped the flag and gave them a warning. That means get away from the sidelines, get further back. Coach Jack McNeil is still hot. By the way, McNeil played for his father at Boston College where he was a center. In fact, he was the center when Doug Flutie was the quarterback. So he snapped the famous Hail Mary pass. Allen hands off to Moats. Moats has got running room, still driving all the way up to the 40 and across it. There you get a glimpse of why this young man is the best in the country right now, yardage-wise. Jason Mitchell and Kevin Burnett, linebackers, made the stop. He got 16 yards on the carry. You know, there have been comparisons made to Barry Sanders with this kid's ability. And Philip Fulmer says he's a guy that if he, when he runs by you, he'll take your arm off if you don't wrap up. Well, you better do something with him because, you know, two great running backs are coming in next week. Cadillac Williams and Ronnie Brown from Auburn. It's a delay handoff this time, and Tennessee really stuck him. Danny Wilson, the listed on their depth chart as the third string running back. He was hit by Jason Mitchell primarily. Jason Allen also had a hand in it. Jason Mitchell replacing the injured Kevin Simon. He's going to show this kid had all, has all kinds of ability. He just hadn't played a lot. John Poe is another guy who will play a live linebacker tonight for Tennessee as well. They go into the shotgun. Kubik throwing out in the flat. Got a man wide open. He turns it upfield and got the first down. It appears Jonathan Holland, the wide receiver will move the sticks. Jason Mitchell was there, but not until the first down had been picked up. He got 11 yards on it. Coach McNeil said he really liked the talent he had at wide receiver. This is a group of inexperienced guys also. Jonathan Holland only had four passes last year for 80 yards, but he likes their ability. Louisiana Tech in recent years has defeated Alabama a couple of times. They beat Michigan State last year. They've beaten Oklahoma State. All of those on the road for them. Long pass by Kubik. Overshot his receiver who was well covered anyway by Jonathan Hefney. Jonathan Holland was the intended receiver. We're scoreless in the first quarter here in Knoxville. It's homecoming on the hill. All of the old grads are back. Kind of think homecoming is more for the student body now than it is for the alumni. They have a great time with the parties and the parades and the floats and so forth but uh, the alumni come back to campus has changed so much you have a hard time finding your way around that's right looking now at second and ten and off to moats he's got running room he's still driving he's down the sidelines flag goes down he goes out of bounds at the 20 but a flag has dropped jason allen saved the touchdown i think a hold is going to bring back an exceptional run and this guy is showing something here. And remember, Tennessee had trouble with the UNLV tailback. Faison had some big chunks of yardage for Florida against them. So it's an area that I would label as of some concern right now. Defense against the run. Right in the back, the 88 on the offense. 
It'll be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Great run, but call back. It's worth another look, Terrence. Just good, exceptional hard running by Ryan Lowe. You see there, this is a kid that he'll run through an arm tackle if you don't wrap him up. Tennessee's base is going to have to game tackle him and cut off the lane. So with the penalty, brings up his second down, about 15 yards for a first. With the ball resting on the 47-yard line. Kubik is in the gun, and he is in trouble. What a great, great play by Jason Allen on a safety blitz. So Coach Chavis came up with a big defensive play that time, sending Allen on the blitz, and Allen, one of the best tacklers on the team, shows you why right here. And he's the free safety. He's going to come on a blitz, and basically he's unblocked. John Chavis likes to bring pressure. He hasn't been able to do it because he had such inexperienced players at cornerback. And Jonathan Wade and Jonathan Hefner. Well, he lost 11, so it brings us to a third and 25 situation. Once again in the shotgun. They hand it off to Motes, and this time Tennessee wrecks him up as he steps into what was a hole for about a half of a second. Jason Mitchell closed it up. Justin Harrell also in on the tackle. The Tennessee holes got away with one right there, a holding call, or Louisiana Tech would have been in great position down at the 20-yard line. Hefney is deep. Matt Butler will be kicking for the Bulldogs. These two teams have met once before, and Tennessee won 50 to nothing. Nice kick. Hefty signals for a fair catch and makes it at about the 21-yard line. And that's where the Tennessee balls will take over on offense. No score here in Knoxville, Louisiana Tech and Tennessee. And we're in the first quarter with 7.49 remaining in this quarter. 0-0. Zero, zero. You're watching college football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. All right, back to the action here. Schaefer remains at quarterback Houston at tailback. And Houston off the left side up to the 30-yard line. They got about nine on that one. Hamilton, linebacker, and Barry Robertson, the Mike linebacker, also in on the tackle. 7.30 with the clock ticking, first quarter. There's Cedric's uh, numbers. Needs 21 yards to become 14th on the UT list at 1800 should get that it's a two or three of it right here Frederick Houston pile driving straight ahead Tennessee offensive line as we have commented on before is playing really really well at least they have in the first two ball games I think against Florida it's as good an offensive line play in the first half for the most part in the second half as I've seen in a long time. You know, and, and you talk to the coaches and they say, you know, we think the reason for that is these kids have played together. We're not substituting a lot of guys. They play together. They have a lot of experience. And I think Michael Munoz and Jason Respite are, are doing a good job of leading this group. Some would say they have a little bit of a mean streak in them, too, and that's what you need on the offensive line. Rob Smith brings a little bit of that. Here is Schaefer in trouble trying to escape. Throwing across his body, incomplete. Brent Schaefer looking for Jason Swain. Take a look. You'll see. He's going to feel the pressure and reverse his field. Yeah, they got him real quick flustered out of there. And Swain should have had that ball. That went right through his hands. I think he was more concerned with staying in bounds. Well, he had at least one foot in bounds. He'd have been all right. Out of the eye backfield. Hand off. This time, Cedric outside, still driving up the midfield and into Bulldog territory to the 49-yard line. Michael Johnson and Jerron Wilson out of the secondary made the stop, but not until he got 19 yards. Just when we talk about the 
offensive line, they show you exactly what we're talking about. He's running on that right side. Jason Resford, Cody Douglas, Aaron Sears, huge hole. And I think Cedric's still hampered by that injury. Just seems to still be hobbled a little bit He's by his injury. Both of the first two ball games with a little bit of a limp and ankle injury in the first half in both cases. Schaefer apparently checking off. Gerald Riggs has checked in at tailback. Here's Schaefer. The left-hander lets it fly. Got a man there, and it's incomplete. Ooh, no flag. Tony Brown, the intended receiver. You hear the reaction of the crowd, but the referee disagrees. The fans are saying, you called this a penalty against Tennessee and Jonathan Wade. Let's see if there's contact before the ball gets hit. I think I agree with the fans. I believe so. <laughs> I agreed with them on the first call. I disagree with the referees on this call. Here's straight ahead Riggs. Gerald Riggs Powell drives down to about the 40-yard line. Trevon Brown, defensive tackle, made the stop. But classic example again there of what we were talking about. This offensive line so very much improved from a year ago. Just a good hole right there for him to run through. Brett Schaefer flagged down. We'll get the referees called here in just a moment. The referee tonight is Jay Vines. Dead ball. Eagle Eagle snap. Gets the offense. Five yards. Remains third down. See the offensive brain trust on the side. Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator. Head coach Philip Fulmer there, of course. Now the dean of coaches in the Southeastern Conference. Illegal snap was the call. So it sets them back. Makes it a third and six. At the 45. Schaefer fakes the handoff. Tucks it. Wants to run. Doesn't get much out of it. Barry Robertson. Middle linebacker makes the hit for the Bulldogs. Good coverage by Louisiana Tech in the secondary. He's going to have a play action fake there. and I think he may have given up on the play a little early. That brings up a punting situation. Fourth down and got five to go. So Dustin Calkwood will come in and kick to Corey Brazil. Who's standing at his 10-yard line. Colquitt's got plenty of time, gets his kick away, and drives him back to the five-yard line. Brazil trying to get to the sidelines. Too much Tennessee speed. Kevin Burnett, who can fly, made a great play. First of all, not a smart play by Corey Brazil. As a return guy, you put your heels on the 10-yard line, and if the ball's over your head, you let it go. You never feel this kick as a return guy. 38 yards on the kick, but a very effective 38. He fields his kick on the six-yard line and tries to outrun Kevin Burnett. Burnett had 16 tackles and made defensive player of the week against Florida. He's a leader, he's a captain on this team. Actually, he's already graduated. He's working now on his master's degree. And he's healthy. Yes, he's very healthy. Kubik is the quarterback. Donald Allen injured early in the game, has not come back. Kubik, let's go, got a man out there, stretching for it. Davis, and just a great play, great effort by Davis, who's six foot, 177, junior. And he's gonna beat the freshman, Jonathan Hefney. He has a good five yards on Jonathan Hefney, and makes an exceptional catch. I like the offensive philosophy of Louisiana Tech. They know Tennessee's going to pack it inside to try to stop Ryan Moats. They're going to take their shots down the field against these young corners of Tennessee. From Michigan Davis is the receiver. Now they get out of a hole with one big play. They send Moats outside. He got away with one tackle there, got through it, but a flag is down. So we'll hold everything. He had a great effort, broke a tackle, but flag was dropped. Way back here about the 29-yard line. Referee will tell us exactly what the infraction was. Base man. 
Five yard face man. This is number 42 on the defense. The five yards will be added to the end of the run. The line of game is made. First down. At 42 is Daniel Brooks, who's in it linebacker. We haven't seen much of him in this Daniel early is season. Be at the top of the screen, and Ryan Moach is going to run through his tackle. That was a quick face mask if it was a face mask. It certainly didn't slow him down. So it's first and ten. Add five more on there for the Bulldogs. All at the 47-yard line of Louisiana Tech. Kubik. Hands off to Motes. Motes is stringing out. Not enough speed to turn the corner on Tennessee's secondary. They come up really, really well. Corey Campbell, who won a starting job. He lost it after the UNLV game. Now he's won it back in this ball game. And any good football coach would tell you, you can't beat speed by running east and west. You beat speed by running north and south. Ryan Motes not going to be able to outrun the Tennessee defense to the corner. Not very often. All right, it's a second down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Tennessee a 24-point favorite in this ball game, but so far been in, unable to do anything offensively. Here's Moats out in the flat. Finally chased down, but not until he gets deep into Tennessee territory to the 38. Here comes another flag. Rashawn Fellows, cornerback, made the stop. You know, in the first game, you and I talked about Dominic Dorsey being a kid that went from zero to full speed. I think Ryan Motes is a Five yards and 36 on the defense. Five yards will be added to the one. First down. Face mask on Rashawn Fellows. I think Ryan Motes is another kid that's full speed after the first step. Good play call, good blocking. And I'm still having a hard time finding these face masks. Can't see it at that angle. It is first and ten for Louisiana Tech. Marching on the Tennessee Vols. They play a lot of road games because they play big name teams that will not come to their place. Rolling, throwing, Kubik. Got it. Touchdown, Julius Cosby. fake by Kubik. He's going to feel some pressure, but still able to make the throw. Hefty goes for the interception, and Cosby finds a checkerboard. Or Butler will attempt the extra point. It is up, and it is good. By the way, he is from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. As a freshman. You know, Phil Fumers talked about growing, growing pains with the young quarterbacks. I think Tennessee's also going through some growing pains with these young secondary folks. Oh, there's no question about it. They definitely are. Uh, you know, we saw try to make an interception against Florida. Turned out to be a touchdown. Saw it there. Turned out to be a touchdown. The angle is not just exactly right. Take another look at it and you'll see what we're talking about here. Florida confused Tennessee with the crossing routes. And this is just... Jonathan Heffy trying to make a play on the football a couple of steps late. A poor tackle there by Campbell, and he's in the end zone. So Louisiana Tech goes on top, seven to nothing. Real surprise here. As we said Tennessee came in a 24-point favorite, but hey, these people have been underdogs to a lot of big teams. Said they beat Alabama a couple of times. Good family team. Michigan State last year. The LA Tech scoring drive, five plays, 97 yards, and it took only a minute 35. You read their media guide, and one of the first lines in their media guide says, We've spent the last 15 years playing the best town in the country on the road. Yeah. There's Johnny Davis, the defensive coordinator, talking to uh, Hefney. and coaching on the sideline and Hefney of course made the stab at the interception didn't come up with it. Corey Larkins will be deep. Ostro 
Stryker will kick off. Brad a Stryker kicks off for the Bulldogs. 244 remaining in the first quarter. And she finds himself behind. Gerald Riggs looking for running room. Does a pretty good job. Gets it over the 25 to the 26-yard line. I think if Tennessee was looking for a wake-up call, they have one now. They got one, <laughs> big time. 97-yard drive. Eric Ames will now come in at quarterback. Safer started. Ames has relieved him. Of course, Ames had a great, great second half against the Florida Gators. Cedric Houston's back at tailback. The give is to second. He's got running room. Still on his feet. Still fighting. Down the sidelines. Finally run out of bounds. At about the 37 yard line. Dean Johnson. Tremendous play. 35 yards. He's holding up some yardage. Running it behind the right side of that offensive line. You see they pull the card there. Rob Smith. A great block. Of by Cedric Houston. So first down and 10 to go. Tennessee trying to answer the Louisiana Tech score rather quickly. They hope. Here's a big hole again. This time Cedric is long gone. Cedric Houston, 37 yards. Sixteen remaining. Just Another look. Good blocking. Good lanes. Good blocking by Chris Hannon, the wide receiver downfield, and Cedric Houston said, "Hey, I'm looking for a TD." Tony Brown, Chris Hannon, and Jason Swain were the starting receivers tonight, but we may see as many as nine receivers in action. Six have caught touchdown passes. Six of them have You know, I had an opportunity to talk to Jason Swain, and I said, "You know." He said, you know what? All we want to do is win. We want to win. We don't care who gets the credit, who gets the passes. If there's a W at the end of the ball game, that's all we want. There's the drive. Two plays, 73 yards. Like a big total of 19 seconds. Eric Newman and Eric Franklin will be deep for the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. I guess Cedric Houston said, you know, all the talk of Brian Motes being a great back. There's another good back in this ballgame. That's me. <laughs> and Riggs has looked good on a couple of plays, so we're going to see a lot of running backs on Tennessee's side tonight. Barkins will be in there at times also. Jabari Davis will be seeing action from him. Possibly even Yancey. <laughs> I think the coaching staff was looking at this as an opportunity to play a lot of play. Newman and Franklin are deep for the Rotec Bulldogs. Will Hoyt. A lot of foot into this one. It's what you call unreturnable. <laughs> Eric Franklin was back there in the back of the end zone, but nothing you can do with that except watch it. Let's look at Ryan Motes here. You see the exceptional ability while he's one of the best running backs in the country. Just, as we talked about, one step and full speed, breaking arm tackles. This kid's special. You know, and he didn't re get recruited by a lot of colleges. They thought he maybe was too small to carry the load. I think he's proved everybody wrong. Yes, yeah, so what you tell me. Three other brothers playing major college ball right now. Three other brothers playing major college ball. Has a brother, Edward, at Texas Tech. 
brother Brandon at Texas A&M and a brother Jason at Harding University. Long throw by Ames. By correction by uh, Kubik and Seneca Chambers came up with a great, great reception. And I'm not sure that Seneca Chambers didn't push in the back. 29 yards on the play. There's Kubik who came in for the injured Franklin. And it's done a good job. Let's watch the end of this play and watch his right arm there to push for the separation. But you saw the official standing 10 feet in front of him and no call. Against Rashawn Fellows. Seneca Chambers, number six there, was the man who caught that football. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Kubik goes in the shotgun. Protection. Normally they run out of a one-back set. And Moats trying to get outside, does spin, and gets some yardage on a second good effort. Got three yards out of it and worked for him. Jason Hall made the stop. You know, Ryan Moats is one of those kids, if you're a defensive coordinator, every time he touches the ball, you hold your breath. Because he has him stopped in a backfield, he bounces it outside, it, and you just hope that someone can bring him down. He is listed as 5'9", but people kind of smile from Louisiana Tech when you say that. I think we're talking maybe 5'8", at the most. But he is compact, and he is very durable. Cubic. Looks like might have been motion on the Bulldog line. We'll await the official ruling there. He's going to put it in the air again. Referee Vines. Dead ball. Ball start number 64 on the offense. Five yards. Remain second down. There's left guard Aaron Lips who moved that time. There's Coach McNell of Louisiana Tech. He's had about 16 players drafted into the NFL since he took over there and a number of others signed as free agents. So they run a three-man front because they cannot recruit that many big, big guys. So they recruit linebackers, play four linebackers. Right now they're on offense and Kubik is at quarterback. Stands up, throws a slant, it's wide open to Davis. And Davis is finally stopped by Rashawn Fellows with another significant gain, 15 yards to be exact. Going to have an isolation here, and Rashawn Fellows is lost. That's the defensive back that has no clue where he should be. Even at his back to the ball there and couldn't find it. So it's first down and 10 to go. We're in the final seconds, 47 and ticking in the first quarter, 7-7 ball game. Cubic goes under center this time, hands it off to Moats. He's riding outside. He's got room. He's still on his feet. He's gone. Touchdown. Ryan Moats. 37 yards. Wow. Barry Sanders lot. We told you he was one of the best in America. Now you see why. Good call, good blocking. He's going to have a convoy out in front of him. Good block by the wide receiver, and there he shows his speed. Had three runs last year of over 60 yards. This kid can flat out do it all. Well, Weddle will attempt the extra point. Danny Weddle, and it's up there, and it's good. And uh, shocker, I guess you could say. Surprising. To say the least, Louisiana Tech leading by a score of 14 to 7. But Philip Fulmer said all week going into this ball game, he said, This is a good football team we're facing. And he said, You know, we're we have potential, but we're really not that good. One more look at the touchdown by Moats. Good job of following his blocks. A good block by the wide receiver outside, and no chance. Well, Tennessee now knows they are in a fight. Forget the 24-point favorite role right now. It's just simply a dog fight. There are the numbers for Moats. Nine rushes, 72 yards. That averages out at eight per carry. Of course, a touchdown. So he's adding to his national stats right now. We saw a brief shot 
of Coach Chavis on the sidelines, the defensive coordinator from Tennessee, who is a very unhappy coach right now. You know, not only do you have to worry about with your young defensive backs coverage, but you also have to worry about proper angles. Here's a frightening thought for Tennessee. Coming up next is Cadillac Williams and Ronnie Brown. I'm not going to say anything else about that. I'm worried about Ryan Moats right now. Well, you get a double shot of it next week. That game, by the way, will be a night game right here in Neyland. Kick off into the end zone and no return possible. Dory Larkins was back there. There's Coach Chavis. He did some work with his defense. season UT had scored 11 touchdowns with 11 different players. They need one right here. From one of those 11 or somebody brand new you would accept. Well, look, Tennessee's last scoring drive was very impressive, so let's see how they answer the score of Louisiana Tech. Eric Ames is a quarterback. Joe Riggs, a tailback. Still fighting. Still fighting. Good running. I tell you, Riggs and Houston have both looked terrific here tonight. Dez Abrams, the free safety, came up to make the stop after a 19-yard game. Well, we expected look. these kids, those two, to get the bulk of the load, and you see why. Good blocking by the line. He's just able to choose his length. He's got a nice little wiggle to his run. Ains with an eye back to all two receivers left, one right. Goes straight up the middle. There's Riggs across the field and down to the 48-yard line. Michael Johnson and Dez Abrams in the secondary made the stop after a 14-yard pickup. Exceptional play by the Tennessee offensive line, just straight ahead blocking. Huge scene for Gerald Riggs and hard running. First down and 10 to go for Tennessee, trailing 14-7. Two top-rated football conferences in the nation. Catch eight football replays each week. Check out your favorite team and preview the competition. It's all on CSS. Ames hands off. Cedric Houston. Correction, Gerald Riggs. Gerald Riggs gets a little bit of yardage there. Number 31, Gerald Riggs got one yard to be exact. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here are your first quarter stats. First downs. Well, Louisiana Tech. Here's a nice run by Ricks. This time he gets a first down and more down to about the 32-yard line. Gerald Riggs. 15 yards by Gerald. Good pickup by Riggs. I think this is one of those situations where Gerald fakes himself out. I think the lane is to the right and outside. Good blocking by the offensive line. You see the pull by Cody Douglas. And I think Gerald should take this to the right and outside, and he's still running. Tennessee first and 10, trailing 14-7, to seven, driving, though, with the football. At the 32 of the Bulldogs. Ames rolls. Drops the pass off. It's caught. On the sidelines goes Corey Anderson. A great and a one-handed catch. Stumbling when he caught it. It was not a very good throw by Eric Ames, but an exceptional catch in recovery by Corey Anderson. It covered 15 yards. Take another look and look at Anderson's effort here. Looks to be over his head at first. Brings it in with one hand. Big fullback. Weighs 270 pounds. Big athletic fullback. He's a kid that didn't play football until his senior year in high school. Right here in Knoxville, Tennessee, Austin East High School. An exceptional player. We have a player down, a bulldog. We get his number right here, but we think it's Michael Johnson. Okay, Michael Johnson, number 21. Who's had a good game, been in on a lot of tackles so far. Strong safety, 5'10, 195. So his second injury here for this team tonight. Their quarterback, Donald Allen, got hurt early in the game. Kubik has replaced him, but Kubik has done a real good job. 
Still working on Michael Johnson. Let's see if we can, on a replay, pick up where he got hurt. I think he's the collision right there, and then maybe the hit in the back. Well, the initial contact by Corey Anderson, then another Tennessee player, and then his own play. I think 270-pound fullback is what caused the injury. He really took a shot from Corey. You'd like to know what that thought process is right before you take on Corey Anderson if you weigh 190 pounds, and he's 270. 13.50 remaining in the first half. It's 14-7, to 7, Tennessee. Yes, they are trailing Louisiana Tech. Gerald Riggs is at tailback. Eric Ainge operating at quarterback. Got a three receiver set, two right, one left. Referee sets the ball and gets out of there. We're ready to play football. Auburn, one week from tonight, right here in New York. That's a week away. Right now you worry about the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs if you're a Tennessee fan. Maybe checking off, seems to be. And his eye backfield. Rolls, throws quickly. A little miscommunication with Tony Brown, perhaps. Brown and Ains were not on the same page. I think that ball may have been tipped at the line of scrimmage by the Louisiana Tech defense. See if we can find it right here. Yeah, I think you're right. It looked like it was. It came out a little wobbly. So it's second down and 10 to go. Let's see what Randy Sanders has called right here. Done a great job in the first couple of ball games. Hands off. That's a good choice right there because Rich is running extremely well. But he doesn't get a whole lot on it. Bo Cox from safety and Terrence Alexander from the secondary up to make the stop. Brings up a third down. They need about eight for a first. Another look. As you said, they're bread and butter. This is what they do well. Run the football. Two young quarterbacks, a veteran offensive line, good running back. Yards per play, both of them over nine. Ains out of the shotgun, rolling, throwing, back to the end zone. Is it in? Yes, it is. Touchdown, C.J. Payton. Extra point to tie it by James Wilhoyt. Henderson holds, Miles snaps, the kick is up, and it is. Good for tied at 14. Very impressive drive. 13-01 remaining in the first half. 14-14 ball game. You're watching college football on CSX, your source for Southeast Sports. 13 minutes remaining in the first half. Franklin fields it, tries to get outside, does get to the sideline and down the sideline for a good return. I think he gets a little too close to the sideline. 27 yards. Good job of setting up the return, and he had a lot of field left. There's the drive for the score. Eight plays, 80 yards, took 231 off the clock. Payton with a 13-yard reception from Ainge. Matt Kubik at quarterback now for the Bulldogs as they start at the 30. Kubik looked real good, real poised. Hands off to the... Big man notes, and he gets about two before Omar Gaither made it a hit. They'll give him three. Make it now a second and seven situation. Omar Gaither, there he is. Terrific athlete. They've just been trying to find a place for him. Tried him at safety some, and 
Also at linebacker, of course, which seems to be his position now, and that's where he said when he started tonight at the outside linebacker spot. Mitchell moved into the middle. Cubic stands, throws. Incomplete. Jonathan Holland had it in his hands, let it slip through, and he would have been right at the first down marker. That's one of those situations where a guy takes his eyes off the ball, looking to make a move. Look that ball all the way in, two hands on it, and then look for the marker. 14, 14, three, third down and seven to go. We're still very early in the second quarter in this one. Kubik stands up in the shotgun. Got three receivers set to the left. Flag fly. Well, probably motion by the Bulldogs. Crowd of over 100,000 in here, of course. We'll get official word on that a little bit later. Dead ball. Ball start. Number 78 on the offense. Five yards. Remains third down. Right guard Marcus Lindsay is the guilty party. You'll see it right here. Oh, yeah. Tennessee moving on the defensive front. I think he sees that movement and flinches and draws flat. So it becomes third and 12 now for Louisiana Tech. And off to Mertz, who changes directions. Look at him fly, but Tennessee's defense also flying on that one. And he is hit by Rashawn Fellows. Three-yard gain. Good reaction by Fellows that time, because I thought he was going to get a sizable chunk of yardage. Just a little give. He's going to get his offensive lineman out in front. A good block there by the wide receiver. And Fellows able just to get enough of his leg to bring him down. A good so, stop by Tennessee defensively. Yes, it was a good stop. Brings up fourth down. About nine yards to go. Jonathan Hefty is standing back. Matt Butler gets the kick away. Hefty backs up from it. It's a little bit short, so he lets it roll. It'll roll down to about the 26-yard line, where the Volunteers will take over. 11-24 remaining in the first half. 14-14 ball game. You're watching college football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Cedric Houston is back at tailback. He and Riggs have been alternating there. Both have looked very good. Ains hands off to Cedric. Cedric bounces outside after being hit by one man and chased down from behind. Jamal Cage, the defensive end, made the stop with number 99. Got only a yard out of it. Cedric going to run into his own man right there and then try to bounce it outside and good recovery by Cage. Brings up a second down and nine. Tennessee operating at their own 28-yard line. The give straight ahead this time across the 30, about the 32-yard line is Cedric Houston. Gregory Hollins, weak side linebacker, made the stop. Louisiana Tech and Tennessee meeting for the second time ever. First time was a 50 to nothing victory for Tennessee, which was the first shutout, by the way, during the Philip Fulmer era. But it's a different LA Lock Tech team in here tonight. Louisiana Tech looking very good. Straight ahead running this time and not much there. Cedric Houston. Hit on the line by Travon Brown and Gregory Hollins. So Tennessee has to turn it over. A very uneventful series right there, Terrence. Didn't do much. Not much at all. After two exceptional drives by Tennessee, putting the ball in the end zone, they come back on this play and they sputter a little bit. Excuse me, on this drive. Colquitt standing at his 20. Corey Brazil is in deep receiving position for the Bulldogs. gets into it. Brazil feels it, drops it, picks it back up, drops it again, juggling in, finally hangs on to it, but Omar Gaither had caught up to him by that time. 
almost a disaster. I'm going to venture to guess that Brazil is not comfortable returning punts. This is a kid that catches the ball on the six-yard line and then a near fumble here on this return. Covered 43 yards, another look from behind. Drop. Not a Tennessee guy within five yards. <laughs> <laughs> the juggling that thing. What? Very fortunate. 24 to go in the second quarter. 14-14 ball game. Tennessee crowd urges the defense to dig in right here, and a flag is dropped in the backfield. Time run out. Dead ball, substitution foul, number 13 on the white. Five yards, remains first down. All right, you heard the referee. Mr. Vines gave us the information. That puts it back to the 15-yard line, where it becomes first and 16 yards to go. 15 yards to go, correct. Kubik is the quarterback. He came in when Franklin went down with a, or Allen went down with an injury. Donald Allen, the starting quarterback, and he hasn't come back. Well, there you see Moats and Houston. Houston with already 115 yards. Moats with 78 on the night. Throw out of the flat, complete and up to about the 19-yard line, and out of bounds goes Eric Newman. I think that'll get them back to the original line of scrimmage or close. Yeah, it's going to be about second and 11, as a matter of fact. Jack McNell's Louisiana Tech Bulldog. Surprising a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of Tennessee fans, by sitting here in a tie right now with the balls. Yep, kind of misfired on that one. Misfire, but a smart play by Kubik. Paris Harrelson is all over this screen. He throws this ball to Ryan Motes. It's going to be a disaster. Take a look at Harrelson. Harrelson smells screen and Kubik sees Harrelson. Wisely throws it in the ground. Kubik got popped pretty good after he released it. Third down and 11. 9 11 to go in the first half. Tennessee's defense trying to charge itself up, I guess you could say right here. Feed off the crowd. The crowd's pleading for defense. Kubik goes into the shotgun. It's a big rush. Gets his pass away complete. Not enough for a first down, but a remarkable play anyway. Eric Newman was the receiver. I don't quite know how he got that pass away. Omar Gaither in there. And, Car um, and Carlton Neal goes airborne applying the pressure. And Omar Gaither makes an exceptional play to bring the wide receiver down. Matt Butler will go into putt formation, so Tennessee's defense does hold at this time and should be in real good field position. Efty is standing at his 35. Butler. Experienced kicker gets it away. Efty backs up. It's a good kick and falls down. So it turns out to be a terrific play for Louisiana Tech. Not only did they get a good kick, but Hefney backed up a few steps and then dropped to the ground. 50 yards is what it is. So the field position is not all that great. 25 yard lines where Tennessee will go to work. A lot of good athletes have come out of here, out of Louisiana Tech. We mentioned Retay and Luke McCallan, and a quarterback named Terry Bradshaw there at one time. Offensive lineman named Will, uh, William Rope. And the basketball player that was pretty good. Carl, the mailman Malone, all graduates of Louisiana Tech. Ains wants to throw, being pressured. <laughs> Sides the forehand beautifully, completes it to Cedric Houston. Got some yardage out of it, but it looked like it was going to be a disaster. John Nash made the hit, covered six yards, but could have easily been a loss. Ains showed a little uh, mobility that time. Showed. A lot of mobility and good athletic ability, staying in the pocket, avoiding the pressure, and finding his outlet, Cedric Houston. 7.50, clock ticking. We're in the first half. Here is 
Cedric Houston. Good gain up to about the 40-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10. Lee Johnson, free safety, who went out earlier, remember, with things shaken up on a tackle, but he's back in there. Eight-yard carry. Cedric and Riggs both running extremely hard tonight. And a lot of people wanted Philip Fulmer to name a starter at tailback, and he said, you know what? We're going to play a lot of kids. We're going to keep fresh legs in, and it's working for us. We're going to continue to do it. And throws, and throws on the run. Got a man there. It is Brett Smith for a touchdown. Beautiful throw, beautiful catch. TD, big on 60 yards. Wow, Brett Smith made a great reception in the Florida game. He's a guy that's been banged up during his career at Tennessee. He's well now, and he is very, very good. Hayes is on the road. Tennessee finally takes the lead here at well, with the extra point it should be 21 14 but we don't count extra points anymore until they go through and that one did go through <laughs> Tennessee 21 Louisiana Tech 14 you're watching college football on CSN your source for Southeast sports You, you get a good idea why Philip Fulmer is so excited about this football team. Picked up by Franklin. And not much room to go anywhere. As he swarmed him very well. James Turner, by the way, made that stop. One of the youngsters, a freshman. Good throw by Eric Ainge on the run. Good concentration by Brett Smith. Philip Fulmer's excited about this football team, and you see why. They just need to keep playing, taking their licks. This is going to be a good football team eventually. They're learning on the fly, especially the defensive side of the ball, a secondary in particular. Kubik goes under center this time. Two receiver set, hands off to Moats. Moats tries to bounce outside, does get away, and almost got to the first down marker with finally run out of bounds by Kevin Burnett. Eight yards. That's his play. He likes to just bounce it along the line, and I guess he's got deceptive speed. Deceptive speed, and he, he's going to lose Jason Allen with a little dip right here. Watch this little dip inside. Good arm, and Kevin Burnett just too fast for him. Not able to get to the corner. Burnett has receiver type speed. Kevin was having a great year, 16 tackles in the last ball game. Already had several big hits tonight. Ed Moats tries to change direction and Tennessee all over him. Omar Gaither would not go for the fake that time and Omar got in there and made the stop 6 2 225 junior good job of Tennessee of not over pursuing not allowing him to find the cutback lane a lot of times with the fast defense they like to over pursue Tennessee does a good job of staying in the lanes waiting on the cutback all right here comes a third down and one balls try to dig in and force the punt LaTeX wants to keep it going. And quarterback's going to roll out and try to do it on his own. He did not make it. Omar Gaither once again made the stop short of the first down. So give big Omar Gaither a couple of uh, stars for his last two plays here. Good play by Omar Gaither, but Matt Kubik can pick up this first down. He gets to the marker and decides to pull up. Good play fake there. He's out. His tight end is an option. Jason Allen takes that away. And right there, you just put your head down and pick up the first down. Too hesitant. He came up a yard short, fourth down and one. So Butler, Matt Butler goes into punt formation. Jonathan Hefty back to receive. Hefty's an exciting player. He Broke one for a touchdown, but it was called back on a holding call in the first game against UNLV. Good kick. He gets away from it. Let's it roll. And it 
It's have to be a great punt all the way down to the 24 yard line. 52 yards, as a matter of fact. 512 to go in the first half. Homecoming in Knoxville on the hill. John Chavis's defense have come up with two good stops of the Louisiana Tech offense. Head coach Will Fulmers led the Tennessee Volunteers to a bowl game all 12 years of his tenure. One of only two coaches in history to do so. Can Fulmer and the Vols make it 13 in a row? Catch the Philip Fulmer Show on Monday, 7 o'clock Eastern, for the latest volunteer football news and highlights. Here's Ainge firing long. Got him! Jason Swain all the way into Louisiana territory. Tremendous catch by Swain. Great, great throw by Ainge. Jason Swain against Derek Farrell. Man coverage. He swims inside and just runs right by him. Great throw by Eric Ainge right on the money. Never broke stride. Perfect. 42 yards. Ball at the 34-yard line. They go straight ahead. Well, maybe a yard. That's about it. Gerald Riggs in now at tailback. He and Houston alternating there. Trevon Brown from defensive tackle made the stop. Auburn Tigers come in next week. Tennessee's first four games at home this year. Scheduled in that aspect, falling favorably for them. And some big road games, though, still to get to Georgia and South Carolina. Then you get big teams like Alabama, Notre Dame coming in here. Hand off to Riggs. A little bit of yardage that time for Gerald, and he's put his head down and really got it on his own. Wendell Crow made the hit after we got about five yards. Tennessee been very successful throwing the ball down the field, and part of that reason is that Louisiana Tech has a new starting secondary. None of these guys played for them last year, so they're a lot like Tennessee in the secondary. A lot of inexperience. Brings up a third and five for Ainge and company, and he's to change it perhaps looking at the sidelines getting the call there from Randy and hands it off straight ahead nothing doing much not a first down Devon Brown made the stop so that brings up decision time right here you got 326 and the clock running I think with the way your offense is moving the ball and the way the defense has shut Louisiana Tech down the last two drives, you go for this. And they have called timeout to talk about it. Coach Fulmer has used his second timeout now. I'll tell you, Tennessee and Florida both let their timeouts get away from them last week, and I'm sure both learned from that. They at the Cedric Houston package right here. And good, hard, exceptional running by Cedric Houston. Right now, he's the best running back in the game. Great blocking by the offensive line, but a good job of Cedric Houston of choosing his holes and finding the lane. Took that one to the house. 21-14. There's Houston again and showing you... about it is he always has a nagging injury. He's had that since he's been in Tennessee. Well, Tennessee decides to go for the field goal. It'll be a 45-44 yard effort. And fairly straight ahead. Referee's trying to sort something out down there. They're satisfied. Let's play football. Tennessee trying to stretch their lead to 24 to 14. If James can hit this one, Anderson holds and Miles will snap. Got a foot into it and it is no good. Let's get to the right. Don't quite understand that call. I think if the offense is rolling pretty good, you short yardage like that. They only needed three yards. This kick just didn't seem to have a whole lot on it. And I think Philip Boomer's asking him what went wrong. Yeah, there was, it was a 
soft kick. Let's put it that way. Louisiana Tech takes over. 21 to 14. They trail the balls. Matt Kubik, the quarterback, takes to his tailback. Wants to throw long. Nobody open. Now he fires. Got a man breaking open at the 40, and that is Davis. Right at probably the 39 yard lines where they'll spot it. Jonathan Hefty running with him, but couldn't stop it. A 13 yards and a first. Good job of Cubic. His primary receiver is going to be covered. He goes for his secondary wide receiver, allows him to find the lane and a good throw. And that's a late hit out of bounds by Jonathan Hefty. And it happened right in front of the head coach of Louisiana Tech. Kubik goes into the shotgun. Two receivers right, one left. He rolls right. That is Van falling down. And catching it is Davis. Cosby, correction on that, it was Cosby. Number 22. So it's a situation where the clock is still running. 2.39 remaining. Second down, a couple of yards shy of a first down. I'm sure Louisiana Tech is thinking touchdown, but I'm sure the coach is saying we'd also like to at least get in field goal range. They don't see his defense trying to stand up right here. The give is to Motes. Motes is bouncing, and he bounces by one tackler and gets back to about the line. Nothing much gained there. Jason Hall, number 94, made the stop. Take another look at this one. As you said, he's going to bounce it outside. Jay Jason Mitchell doing all he can do to hang on. And a good job of game tackling by the Tennessee defense. Under two minutes now. It's third down and two. Uh-oh, that is Moats. And he is... Two minutes of this ball game. We got a third down and two situation. Big down for the Tennessee defense right here. They give it off to Moats. No problem. Got the first down and a lot more. He crashes into Tennessee territory. Well, I, I, made the stop. I think whatever his injury is, it doesn't hamper him. It didn't seem to slow him down, <laughs> did it? Tell you that kid can get to the corner as quick as anybody I've ever seen. He's got nine big yards. First down and ten. All at the 42. Good job of sealing the corner. And that's just almost. Cubic operating out of the shotgun. Wants to throw long. Does throw long. Tennessee's there. And had a chance to perhaps intercept two ball defenders were back there. Seneca Chambers was the intended receiver, but it was closer to the Tennessee players. Brandon Johnson, one of them, closest to it. Jonathan Hefney was in the neighborhood. Now with his cap on backwards there is Trooper Taylor, who has brought a lot of enthusiasm to the running game here at Tennessee, the running backs coach. And boy, he's about as active as, <laughs> he's as active as a player. <laughs> Standing up at the shotgun. Cubic being pressured. Intercepted, I think. Yes. Intercepted by Omar Gaither. Omar Gaither on the ground. Comes up for the interception. Big play for the Tennessee D. And especially for Omar Gaither. I tell you, we called Omar Gaither's name a lot here in the first half. Yeah, yeah. They're looking to set up a screen to Ryan Motes. Tennessee defensively smells it out, plays it well, and Omar Gaith the right in position for the INT. Good heads up play, but also a lot of pressure on Kubik made him unload it just a second or two before he wanted to. Ainge at quarterback, Houston at tailback. Fakes it to Houston, looks for somebody. Fires complete. What a rock. My goodness. Talk about it. You, you talk about throwing the ball on a rope. Mm -hmm. 
great great throw 22 yards. Ainge got a little pressure dumps it off. Corey Anderson is full back and he gets some yardage not enough for a first but positive yardage anyway. Window Crow strong side linebacker made the stop for the Bulldogs. Ainge in a hurry up situation. Yeah, you're right, Tennessee goes to the hurry up offense. 33 seconds and running. Gives it off to Cedric Houston. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Cedric Houston. A great ball and a great run. Everybody expecting pass. Everybody in the stadium, including me, expecting pass. And Randy Sanders makes a great call. Good blocking by the offensive line. Good hard running by Cedric Houston. Look at the hole. You and I can go through there holding hands. And on with a great block. Good blocking downfield by the wide receiver. Touchdown, Cedric Houston. You know, you and I talked about maybe in this game there would be a Tennessee running back that separates from the pack. Maybe he's seeing it. I think Cedric is sending a message. Will Hart's point after is good. And Tennessee, with 21 seconds to go, takes the lead 28 to 14. They needed that score because Louisiana Tech had been in a position to get a first down, remember, just prior to that. Didn't, but had they, they would have still been marching with the football. So the defense comes up big, and then the offense comes up big. That block by Chris Hannon puts Cedric Houston in the end zone. They had a record last week against Florida, almost 110,000. Will Hoyt. A lot of fit into this one, middle of the end zone, and will not be returned by Eric Newman. So, Louisiana Tech will put it in play with 21 seconds to go at the 20. My guess is they'll take a knee, take this one on in the half. The Auburn game will be next Saturday night, 7.45 Eastern and 6.45 Central Time in ESPN game. All right, let's see how they play it right here. Yeah, they're going to just sit on this one. They're not going to take a chance of turning it over. Matt Kubik, the quarterback, will kneel down and let it run out. So it's been a different first half, I guess you could say. Tennessee finally wakes up in the second quarter here after Louisiana Tech ran the ball up and down the field and had a few good passes in the first half. But I think the Tennessee defense now realizes what they have to do, and the offense is looking very good. A very exciting first half. All right, here's the kickoff, and it's into the end zone, and there's no return by Corey Larkins. He cannot return the football. Otherwise, he decides to stay there, and so Tennessee will go first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. We have a couple of guests here in the booth with us. Tennessee has been recognizing this year the legends at Tennessee, and we have two offensive linemen that we will introduce to you here in just a moment. Thank you. All right, here's Ames rolling back. Stumbling, gets a pass off, almost complete under duress, shall we say. All right, we want to introduce to you right here a couple of legends at the University of Tennessee, offensive linemen, big boys right here. Well, one <laughs> played. Charlie Rosenfelder played in the 60s at 220 pounds. I believe he was the biggest man on the team, too, weren't you, not Charlie? Not quite, not quite, Bob. It was uh, Bob Johnson. He was about uh, 228. <laughs> if he were over 230, you were put on the fat man's table, so uh, <laughs> we had to stay on the 230. <laughs> and next to me is Bill Mayo, who played in the... 1980s. We'll talk with them here in a few minutes. Long, long throw. We're going to have interference. Chris Hammond was the intended receiver. Flag down at the 45-yard line. Bill, 
Your son is now a member of the University of Tennessee, so the tradition is going to continue, huh? It really is. It's really exciting for my wife and I, Lisa. We're, we're extremely proud of Cameron, and it started, I guess, last February when he signed here, and it's just been a, a neat experience for us to have him on the sidelines. To see him run through the tee against UNLV was really exciting. He's redshirting this year, but he's been dressing for the game, so that's really been a neat experience for our family. Redshirting is the ideal situation for an offensive lineman. You didn't have that luxury, though, did you? You had to play immediately. No, I didn't. That Tennessee was very thin in the offensive line when we got here, and I ended up having to start the first game as a freshman, and it, it, it was a tough learning experience and a big learning curve for me, and I'm very glad that Cam has the uh, luxury of, of being able to redshirt this year. Charlie, you were here at a time when Tennessee football needed to be sort of resurrected, get it back to where it belonged, and you and your teammates did that. That's right, Bob. We uh, we were the first recruitment class uh, with Doug Dickies, and uh, that's one reason why I decided to come to UT was I felt like he was going to bring Tennessee back to where uh, everybody expected to be. That is incomplete. Intended for Chris Hannon, who couldn't hold on. So it brings up a fourth down and ten situation for the balls, unable to move the football. As you two guys watch the game and you watch the offensive line play, besides the size of the players, what's the biggest difference you've noticed in the play on, of the offensive line? Well, Bill and I were talking earlier. First of all, we did a lot of scramble blocking, and that's where you hit your guy and you would stay with him. And uh, then the second day is pass protection. Uh, we, we couldn't use our hands. We really had to grab a jersey to keep having uh, illegal use of hands. So uh, tremendous difference uh, from that standpoint. Now, I was in the area when, in the area when you could use your hands, but to me, the difference, the biggest difference is in the run blocking. I think everything's a lot higher now, a lot more zone, zone blocking, a lot more combination blocks between the offensive line. And, and that was just beginning to develop in the early 80s when I was playing. Corey Brazil building the punt, and Jason Allen made the stop. So Louisiana Tech takes over on the 38-yard line. It's a 46-yard kick, a mile high, though. There is Cameron Mayo. <laughs> Good to see Cam down there on the sideline. Yeah. Paying attention, ready to go. Good-looking youngster. Well, I know both of you have looked at this offensive line. It looks to me like it's a lot better than it was last year. Do you agree? Uh, th this is a great night to have two offensive linemen here. When, they, when you have <laughs> 200 yards rushing in the first half, 200 yards is a magic number for a football team rushing, and for them to get it in the first half of the game is unbelievable. And I have been so impressed with the way our offensive lines played in the first three ball games. They have been outstanding. I think another thing that's interesting, uh, in 67, our line was together for two years. And here you've got five, uh, you know, people that haven't really been together, maybe for spring practice coming in, and they're being such a cohesive group and working together. It's really, really encouraging to see how they're working together. Two Tennessee legends in the uh, press box with us here, Bill Mayo and Charlie Rosenfelder, from the 60s and from the 80s. Charlie, who are some of the players who were some of the stars your senior year on that team? Well, we had uh, Richmond Flyers, who was our wingback. Uh, Richard Pickens uh, was a fullback. Uh, we, uh, of course, uh, Bubba Weich uh, was a quarterback that came in uh, uh, that year. Very fortunate he didn't get hurt during the season. He was uh, very, both knees, right? we were just waiting any time for him to go out. Uh, like I say, it was just uh, Neil McMeans, Dick Williams, uh, Nick Showwater, people you know, on the defense there that didn't have an outstanding year. Kubik rolls to his left, throws across his body, and completes it. Knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Louisiana Tech. Seven yards on the pickup. Nice play by Kubik that time. And Julius Cosby was the receiver. Kubik, John Fellows made the hit. Kubik is very impressive in the first half. Kind of quiet, 10 of 15 for 164 yards and one TD. Um, and he, he wasn't the starter. Donald Allen, you know, went out at the beginning of the ball game. I, he's played exceptionally well. Um, second down, about game. three yards to go for Louisiana Tech, trailing Tennessee 28 to 14. Deep handoff this time, and Tennessee pursues it pretty well, but he does get to the corner, and it's going to be pretty close. That's of course Ryan Motes, who's had a super night with Sean Fellows. Trailed and made the play. Three yards on the game. Let's take another look at it. 
Ryan Motes has been outshined a little bit tonight by Tennessee's Cedric Houston, but still a very exceptional back. They're able to pick up the first down. Yes, they waved the chains down the field, so Louisiana Tech, 14 minutes to go in the third quarter. We're early in the second half, moving with the football. Tennessee unable to do so in their first possession. Kubik wants to throw. Intercepted at the 40-yard line. Great reaction by Kevin Burnett. There he is, the linebacker who has such a great game against Florida has come back and had another super game tonight. So big turnover for Tennessee here as they receive the interception. Look again. Kevin going to drop back in coverage and read the quarterback's eye. Steps right into the path lane of the ball. And Kubik knows he's made a mistake. <laughs> Bill, who were some of the uh, players in the 80s, some of the names people will recognize that were playing with you at that time? Certainly Reggie White, uh, Willie Galt, Alan Cockrell was their quarterback. Uh, one of the guys that, that me and our fellow offensive linemen take pride in is Johnny Jones. He was Tennessee's first thousand yard rusher in 1983 and Coach Former gave us all, a, all the, the linemen that year of football with the Johnny Jones and our, our name and number in the thousand yard season on there. That was pretty exciting for us as linemen. Cedric Houston carries T.J. Jackson made the stop after a short gain. It becomes second down and eight. Two yard gain. Ainge stands up, looks at the sidelines for some information, and there you see he's getting it from Randy Sanders. Jim Bob Cooter and company over there, signaling him to play. Trying to bounce inside and then outside, not much there. Cedric couldn't find much room. Stop was made by Travis Brown. We were talking, guys, about size. We'll take a, a talk to you about that in a second. Let's take another look at this. One of the few times tonight, there's nowhere for Cedric Houston to run. Mm -hmm. Charlie, one of the guards tonight on the field weighs 375 pounds for Louisiana Tech. <laughs> what would you guys have thought if you saw somebody like that? Uh, we would uh, probably go home. Uh, <laughs> uh, tremendous size and speed. Uh, that's one thing that you see different this in this day and age. Uh, like I say, uh, just uh, the height and uh, the weight and the speed they can move and just great athletes, really. Tennessee unable to pick up the first down will have to punt. This, this, this was ball a, had to be picked up, didn't it? It was a lateral. Not a smart decision by Eric Ainge. Feels the pressure, throws it out there. Tennessee dodges a bullet. Cedric Houston wisely picks up the ball. It's one of the few times he's looked like a freshman in the last yeah, first three games, isn't it? True. Dustin Colquitt in punt formation, standing at his 25-yard line. He gets it in the air. Brazil waving everybody away from it and it will be down and Louisiana Tech will take over. Score 28 to 14 Tennessee. You're watching college football on CSS your source for Southeast sports. After practice and certainly the games were fantastic but just that part of be that that feeling of being a part of that team is, is really hard to replace. This time they surround Kubik and nowhere to go. Turk McBride led the charge that time for the Volunteers. I would agree with Bill. And uh, but one thing, uh, I've been very fortunate. Our 67 team has uh, been very close since we've played. When we hit together, we have uh, super turnouts. And so that camaraderie really just carries on as years go by. Well, I think the thing that they did that, that Mike Hamilton put together for the UNLV game, the football Letterman Union, that was fantastic. What a what a great weekend that was for, for everybody involved. All right, Cubic now, second and 13. Outside and not much running room out there. Omar Gaither closed it down real quick. Omar Gaither's had a good night. And John Chavis' defense have, has really responded. UN, Louisiana Tech able to take advantage of the inexperienced secondary, but since scoring their last touchdown, La Tech just hadn't done a whole bunch on offense. So it's a third down and ten situation. There's a good shot of Omar Gaither. Going into the shotgun this time. Or Cubic. Pass all the way. 
Whistle though and it stops the play. Flag is down. Probably motion. Referee Vines will give us the word right here in a second. Dead ball. Ball start number 84 on the offense. Five yards. Range third down. He's getting hot. Aaron <laughs> Kemps was the man who was in motion that time. The legendary General Nalen once said, I'll take one good blocker. He is worth more than three star running backs. <laughs> wow. I don't think you'll get any argument from this group on that one. <laughs> I've forgotten that statement, and I just chuckled when I heard it this week. Uh, <laughs> one good blocker over three running backs. All right, it is a third down and 16. Cubic being chased. Byers got it up short of a first down, though. Well short. Knocked out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Good pressure. Eric Franklin. Good pressure being, being applied by Justin Harrell and a good close and tackle by Omar Gaither. Once again, Omar Gaither has been all over the place here. So, Louisiana Tech will have to punt it now. It'll be Matt Butler kicking to Hefney. Jonathan Hefney, who stands back at about his 32-yard line. Still looking for Hefney to break a big one. Has not a chance tonight, though. I think we all know the ability is there. He returned four in one game at Hargrave Military. Nowhere to go here, though. Fumble the football. Lucky to get it back. If indeed he did, I think he did. Jonathan Hefty fumbling the football, but coming up with it. So Tennessee now will go to work on offense and see if they can get untracked here in the second half another look he's going to field it well but the initial contact jars the ball loose good job of recovery guys special teams play is awful big right now was there a great deal of it charlie in the 60s uh yes we had quite a bit and of course back then uh we didn't we, if we were on the regular starting crew you were pretty much uh, on, on the same special teams whereas today you have more guys that are individually special teams coming in and uh so uh it, it made a difference sometime because uh, being on the we'll take a break the score 28 to 14 Tennessee you're watching college football on CSS your source for Southeast sports Tennessee first and 10 Riggs is in a tailback now two receivers one on each side Ains fires got his man across midfield and down to the 49 yard line a rocket throw 14 yards to Brett Smith. Brett Smith getting back in the flow of things this year and looking awfully good. That seems to be a good combination. Air games to Brett Smith seems to always come up with a big play. Still pretty early in the second half. 9.27 to go in the third quarter. Tennessee leading 28 to 14. Giving up quite a bit of running room tonight to Louisiana Tech. Something they'll have to work on. There's Schaefer, who's played two series in this game. We may or may not see him in the second half. Ainge went most of the way against Florida, of course. Tennessee breaks out of the huddle, needing to keep a drive alive here. Ainge has got a receiver set on each side. Rolls back and looks and fires way over the head of the intended receiver, Brett Smith, who was pretty well covered anyway. Wisham had uh, done a nice job defensively. Let's look at the isolation there on Brett Smith. He's going to run an out route. Not really good separation for the defensive back. And if you're, gonna, if you're a quarterback and you're going to throw it away, throw it away out of bounds. Volunteers Randy Sanders offensive coordinator has sent in his play and let's see what Eric Ainge out of the gun can do with it this time. It's two backs in for protection drops it off. Nice play. This picks up positive yardage and a first down down across the 40 to about the 38 37 yard line. Gerald Riggs. Nice call by Randy Sanders on the screen. And it's, this is set up perfectly for Gerald Riggs. You've got Jason Respert out front of you. 14 yards on the pickup. Another look. Good job of Eric Ainge of holding the defensive line. Good setup. Respert out front. 
I Rob, like the play call. Rob Smith got a big block, too, number 52. Well, he's having a good year, too. They say he brings an attitude to this uh, offensive line. High backfield, and Ains gives it off to his tailback. Mm. Big hole. Riggs down across the 30. And down to about the 27 yard line. Bob, you can tell we have two former All American offensive linemen in the booth because when the play starts, you hear, mmm. Yeah, the sort of grunt. <laughs> that grunt, yeah. like, mmm. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> uh, it's good to see those blocks, I tell you. Charlie Rosenfelder and Bill Mayo visiting with us, two Tennessee legends. Legends honored every home game here this year. Ains with a deep handoff and nothing much developing there, although Rich tried to make something out of it. T.J. Jackson made the stop. I tell you, uh, Coach Trooper Taylor uh, has made a big difference, too, this year in this running game. He, he's got those backs believing they can break a, a first tackle and move on down the field. That, that helps linemen, too, when they know that guy's going to try to break it. A lot of enthusiasm in Coach, T in Coach Taylor oh, as well. <laughs> firebrand. A lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun to be around. I think he injured a finger last week against Florida, high five and a play. <laughs> On a first down play, they drive straight ahead that time. Once again, something offensive lineman like. And Riggs picks up four. Bob, we're seeing more push this year. That's the thing. Uh, there's no stalemate at the line. They're pushing boys back, these guys back, and that's that's a big change. Yeah. There's nothing passive about this line, is it? Coach Stevens seems to be doing a really good job with his offensive line this year. Ains with the eye backs. And two receivers out wide. One on each side. Maybe change it to play here. We'll see. Rolls back. Sticks it in the stomach of Riggs. Riggs drives for the marker. Got it down the sidelines and run out of bounds. Just short of the goal line by Dez Adams. 17 yards. We'll say it again. Good blocking by the offensive line, but something that I think goes unnoticed is the stiff arm here by Gerald Riggs. He and Cedric Houston do that as well as anybody in the country. So it's goal to goal for the Vols. First down on the four-yard line. Another look. Extremely strong. Good to see him having a good evening. Yeah, it is. Gives it to him again this time. Uh, Louisiana Tech piles it up, anticipating perhaps that was coming, and they drop him for no gain. So it'll be second and goal at the four. Chris Van Hoy made the stop. Primarily had a lot of help. Everybody signaling in from the sidelines. Some of that's fake, isn't it, guys? Those signals we're seeing from the sidelines. <laughs> they got two or three guys wagging, wigwagging down there. And <laughs> some of it better be fake or Ains would be really confused <laughs> right, right now. Right. Fortunately, he knows who to look to. Bait pattern in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Brett Smith. <laughs> You're right, Terrence. It is a good combination. I bet if you go in the chow line, up at the athletic gym, and you spot air games. I bet Brett Smith's right behind. <laughs> that was a great fade pattern and a perfect throw and a great catch. Another look. Good throw by Eric Ainge, and watch the ability by Brett Smith to find the football. Tennessee has some big play wide receivers. As these quarterbacks continue to grow and develop, this offense is going to be potent. Will Hoyt's kick is up and good and makes it a 35-14 game. You're watching college football on CSS, which is your source for Southeast sports. Six receptions, 126 yards, three TD. That's not bad. <laughs> Pretty good. Will Hoyt kicks off and he kicks it right to the goal line, taken by Eric Newman. Newman is hit, gets away from one man, gets away from another, still fighting, and finally got all the way up to the 32-yard line before he is brought down. A good return of 32 yards by Eric Newman. You know, Phil Allen made the stop. Phil Puma will be the first person to tell you we have a lot of room for improvement. I think special teams is one of those areas where we're going to have to see this football team make a lot of improvement as they get into the tougher part of their schedule. I think he would like to get more out of his return game. I think he would like to have better coverage on kicks like that. 
That tough schedule starts next week, doesn't it, Terrence? Bob keeps bringing it up, and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a whale of a ball game. Cadillac and Ronnie Brown coming to town next week on Saturday night. Cubic mm -hmm. gives off the tailback. He's in the backfield most, but once again, he brings it out. The Tennessee does a good job this time. Jason Allen would not let him get to the corner and turn up field. Minus five, as a matter of fact, on that play. Charlie, what's your career right now? Phil, the folks in on what you're doing. Well, I'm currently with uh, Roger Southeastern Lubricants, which is a division of Rogers Petroleum out of Morristown, Tennessee. I'm in the lubricant side, uh, the vice president of sales. We cover all of East Tennessee with Exxon Mobil and Sitco products. So, been in it uh, since I graduated. I was with Exxon for 19 years and have been in the distributor business. Well, great. Cubic. He's tied in in motion, makes his tail back and rolls and throws. Just barely got it away, and it is complete to Davis. He's out of bounds, but short of a first. What about you, Bill? What are you up to these days? I'm in medical sales for a company for BOC Gases. I call on hospital customers in Knoxville, Chattanooga, and Atlanta, and Birmingham area, and also trying to keep up. My wife, Lisa, and I have two two other children at home, Whitney, who's 17, and Hannah, who's 15, so we're trying to keep up with them as well. The athletes? They certainly are. My 17-year-old my daughter, Whitney, is an excellent basketball player and is being recruited and will hopefully have a chance to play at a college basketball. And then the youngest one, Hannah, plays basketball and softball and does an excellent job there as well. All right, it's third down, about seven to go. Pressure on the quarterback. He got his throw. It is complete. It is complete. He's still driving with the football. I thought he'd step out of bounds, but it is completed pass. And Davis did a great job on that one, but there's a flag down, so let's hold everything. Jonathan Hefty's in great position to make a play on this ball. He's running stride for stride with the wide receiver down the left side of the field. Made a great pass at it, but... Let's take a look, Terrence, at the defensive line. They actually did a pretty good job. They're going to get pressure on the quarterback. He's going to stand in there and throw that, and that's what you want your quarterback to do. A so big turns out to be a huge play at 54 yards. And with the flag, they're going to tack on some more. Holding on the defense, number 33. That's the climb, the result of the play. First down. That was on Jonathan Heffner. Mm. He gets beat deep, and he gets called for a hole. 35 to 14, Tennessee leading, but Louisiana Tech threatening on the 11-yard line. What's well, really bad with this new rule, not only do you get beat to get a penalty, they call your number out Yeah, for everybody to hear. <laughs> Kubik hands off to Moats. Moats is in trouble, and finally is dropped for a loss. <laughs> You know, Bill, I, you bring up a good point. I actually like the rule. I spent a, a number of seasons guessing who the penalty was on, and I always came up wrong. <laughs> this way, I know. Brandon Johnson made the stop on that last play, which was a minus two. Good penetration by the Tennessee defensive line. Nowhere for Ryan Moats to go. Has to bounce it outside. The speed of the defense is just too much. So it becomes a second and 12 now for Louisiana Tech. Makes the handoff, throws, got a man open, and inside the 10-yard line is Anthony James, the tight end. They're, they're going to wave it off. They waved it off. He struggled with the reception, never had control of it. And he takes a good shot from the Tennessee defender. Take a look and see how close this was. Quarterback out on the corner, good throw. Good call. Still juggling it when he got hit. Got a good pop from Brandon Johnson and Omar Gaithin. So it'll be third down and 12. Big down for the Tennessee D right here. Kubik is going to operate out of the shotgun. Try to buy a little more time. He <laughs> gets away from the pressure. Still trying to find somebody and just threw it away in the back of the end zone. 
sideline to sideline, boys. The Tennessee defense has looked pretty good here in the past few plays. They're pursuing quite well. Well, as you and I have talked about, Tennessee has exceptional speed on defense, and that's what they do well. They run sideline to sideline. The trouble is their inexperienced secondary has problems when you challenge them, challenge them vertically. The wide receivers running vertical routes is where they struggle. But a good defense is stand by Tennessee. Danny Horwettle will try a field goal from the 25, making it a 35-yard effort. By the way, Horwettle is from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, just down the road. Timeout, though, has been called by Virginia Tech. They might want to rethink this since they're trailing 35 to 14. Louisiana Tech, I think they had to call a timeout. They didn't have the right people on the field. McNell a little bit upset. I've never right seen there. a coach call a timeout and be that mad because he called a timeout. <laughs> the Troy State Trojans put up big wins over Marshall and Missouri to start the 2004 season, but can they defeat Sunbelt Bowl, Utah State? Catch a triple letter of live college football Saturday on CSS. The Big Ten game of the week kicks off live at noon Eastern, followed by the Troy State battle against Utah State at 3.30. Then the UAB Blazers travel to Cincinnati to take on the Bearcats at 7. Catch it on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. All right, time back in. They will attempt the field goal. If you're right, Terrence, they just didn't have the right people out there. But Tom Maddenley wisely pointed out they only had 10 men on the field. So they had to call a timeout. I think the clock is being kept on the field right now, we're told. <laughs> what you see on the screen may not be accurate because I think the, it's been a malfunction and time is actually being kept on the field, but we'll give you what we know here because it's going to be in the neighborhood. Here's Orwittle's uh, kick is up. And it is good. So the Oak Ridge native hits a 30-yard field goal and makes it a 35 to 17 ball game. Nine remaining in quarter number three. Crowd tonight a little bit in excess of 104,000. Homecoming. Back at the end zone, and Larkins will not bring it out there. Bill, you played for majors, right? Yes, sir, sure did. And Coach Fulmer was my offensive line coach. And how was Majors to play for? He was good. He, he was he was tough to play for. He was tough on his players and his coaches, but he didn't do anything I don't think that he would have done himself, and I thought he was a very fair coach and, and did a good job. Did you perhaps see in, at that time that Fulmer might someday be a head coach? Oh, I think so. I think you could see it. it, it I think you could see it in, in his in his demeanor with the team and, and the way, and, and, and you knew that he wanted, had those aspirations to be a head coach someday. Brent Schaefer returns to the quarterback job now for Tennessee. A little bit of almost a mix-up in the backfield, but it turned out to be a positive play. He said he used to pick up some yardage down there. Corey Brazil made the hit. I think Brent Schaefer went the wrong way, but Cedric Houston made a, a, an exceptional play out of a busted play. He's having that kind of night, though. Yeah, not much is going wrong for Cedric tonight. Schaefer under center. Hands it off this time. And the handoff is clean, but no gain. As Brown, Ramon Brown, from tackle, roared in to make the stop. And that's one of the luxuries that Tennessee has. They have experience and depth at tailback. They have experience and depth at the offensive line. They have inexperience at quarterback, but I think, I think you can take care of that with that experience you have at those other positions. You guys agree? Absolutely. I think that's a great point you make, Terrence. The, the, the experience at, at running back and the offensive lineman, they sure can help out those two young quarterbacks. Third down and eight actually lost a yard on that one. Schaefer in the shotgun, fires it out. Juggle the puck, and maybe enough for a first down to Derek Tinsley. <laughs> First time we've called Tinsley's name tonight. First, another receiver. First time tonight, but that's the second time that the receivers have made the quarterbacks look really good. Corey Anderson gets a one-hand grab from Eric Ainge, and Derek Tinsley gets a one-hand grab from Brent Schaefer. Tennessee moves the football. First down and 10 to go. All on the 33-yard line of the Volunteers. Brent Schaefer operating at quarterback. Hey, hey. 
<laughs> Dancing around, trying to make something happen. Nothing against Schaefer. And finally gets driven to the ground on the sidelines by Corey Brazil. To be honest with you, no one in the stadium knows how much time is left in this quarter because the clock is not working. Only the official on the field knows. And so we'll just play it by ear. Had a problem with the play clock last week against Florida and now having a problem with the game, game clock tonight. Need to get that fixed before Auburn comes well, in here next week, right? Yeah, you can, but if you're Tennessee, the athletic director, you keep the people in the stadium, you sell more soda, you sell more hot dogs, <laughs> you sell more popcorn. Uh, <laughs> Good point. I didn't think about that. There you go. And if you're from behind, playing from behind, you just play a little longer. You know. Here is Chris Hammond. Outside, he's gone on the sidelines and finally got caught. But what a great play! Lee Johnson caught up with him. Chris Hannon, who is a burner. One of the local writers here at the beginning of the season played some word association with some of the Tennessee players. And he said, Speed Demon. And the first name that came to mind was Chris Hannon. Surprise me. I would think Corey Larkins. Jonathan Wade, but Chris Hannon is probably one of the fastest players on this football team. Got 38 yards on the reverse. Remember, they tried to reverse against Florida and they fumbled on that one, so they want to come back and see if they could really do it this time, and they did. Schaefer hands off to his tailback, and Gerald of Cedric Houston gets a couple of yards down to about the 25. Let's take another look, Terrence, at that reverse. Good blocking, good job of sealing the corner and Chris Hannon just gonna outrun everything Got him with the shoulder pad we're somewhere late in the third quarter we know that Tennessee leading 35 to 17 and driving with the football second and six right here for Frenchy stands up fires receiver position also you know just pick your poison who do you want to throw to I thought Randy Sanders made a great point about the problems we've had in the running game the last couple of years he said that there the receivers weren't there that could demand double coverage now we've now we've got those guys and all of a sudden it's opened the running game up and the passing game now let's come in the same area of the field the 20 going in Deep in the end zone is Eric Franklin. And he works through one tackle, but not the second. Kubik will work out of the shotgun. Needing some big plays now. And surprisingly, a little bit, they stick to the ground with Ryan Moats. They're at that stage, though, where you think of perhaps passing if you're going to try to catch up. Let's take a look at Eric Ainge's work tonight. Eric Ainge has played exceptional tonight. Came in and really gave Tennessee a spark. Here you see the strength of his arm. He throws a touchdown to C.J. Payton. Comes back. Good pocket presence. Throwing a duck across the middle. Just manages the game really well. The ability in these two freshmen is just unbelievable. One note for Tennessee. Daniel Brooks in on the tackle that time. Now there's a, a big play. It may be a play that Daniel needs to kind of... He's been right there on the fringe. Not quite ready to play, they thought, but a great athlete, great-looking athlete. So maybe a play like that gives him the spark. You know what? Players like Daniel Brooks just need to play football. It's hard to simulate game speed in practice. You just got to get these kids on the field and let them play, and they, they develop, and you see they reach their potential. All right, it is a third down and eight for Louisiana Tech. Kubik rolls right, being chased, fires incomplete. Incomplete at the sideline. Charlie, I bet 
one of the stunning changes in football. There have probably been many, but it's still blocking and tackling. I know that hasn't changed, but the weight programs today, the weight room. Oh, yeah. About the, uh, we were over the first game, as Bill mentioned earlier, we were in and went to the weight room, and they're going to triple the size of the weight room, they say again, and uh, uh, they're training year-round. Uh, so it's uh, just a significant different way of approaching uh, uh, preparing yourself strength wise speed uh, but they have the great facilities here to do that a young man coming in has no excuse to improve himself Corey Larkins will be back to receive Matt Butler's punt Bob the Tennessee record for total offense in a game is 695 yards they have 515 right now whoa Knocking on the door then, so we may see some history here tonight. Butler standing on the 12-yard line. There they got his kick away. Larkins waves everybody away from it, and it will die at the 40-yard line. And that's where Tennessee will take over first down. 34 yards of the kick. has to be pleased with the way his team has looked offensively, especially here in the, well, the latter part of the first half and in the second half. Great, great night of running by Cedric Houston. Good night for Gerald Riggs. Both quarterbacks have looked good. Brent Schaefer is in there now. The offensive line has really been outstanding. Schaefer's numbers on the night, 205, 34. Touchdown to Smith. Referee steps in, blows the whistle. Come out. We see a check. Tech had called a timeout. I think they did not have enough players on the field. You're exactly right. Back. You're exactly right. Tennessee leading 42 to 17. You're watching college football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Auburn and Georgia, Alabama, Notre Dame, South Carolina. There's the difference in total yards. Tennessee having maybe a record night before it's all over. Pass from Schaefer to Brad Cottom. The big tight end from Memphis roars into L.A. Tech territory. Williams made the stop. You know, Vaughn Williams. Both Brad Cottom and Justin Reed are good-looking kids. I think they need to play a little more, but they are good-looking kids. Do a good job of catching the football and getting north and south. Reed, of course, had a great touchdown catch against Florida last week. Cottom's, uh, I believe, his second catch of the year. He's had some injury problems, kind of working himself into shape. Turning the corner this time is Corey Larkins, who's running the field out there. Now got a little yardage before he is dropped. I don't believe we have seen Jabari Davis tonight, have we? No, we have not. Another look at Corey. Good hard running by Corey Larkins. Finds a seam and just tries to get north and south and just won't go down. Makes it a second down and five for the balls. Two receivers to the right, one left. Schaefer operates out of the gun. Gets it off to Larkins. Larkins slashes his way for a first down with a maybe a yard or two to spare. In fact, he got seven yards. John Nash out of the secondary came up to make the stop. Tennessee playing their backup offensive lineman, Stephen Jones. Chuck Prue, Rich Gandy, and David Ligon. Ligon, however you say it. And Tonia is in there too, I'm not sure we also. Here's Larkin's trying to bounce outside and can't bounce much there because Nash is hanging all over him. Zero yardage on that game for Attempted game for Corey. The Auburn Tigers come to town next Saturday night. A couple of great running backs, but they also have a lot of talent on defense. They uh, watch the LSU team in action today, and it's a team that beats LSU. a real good football team, and of course they did 10-9. So that has a lot of ramifications in the PCS situation, the game next week. Schaefer has his batted down. Terrence, there's been some talk. Of course, the Big Ten has gone to instant replay. 
There were about six calls, according to the FCC officials, that were questionable or could have gone the other way last week. And I think the SEC, which has kind of shied away from instant replay, I think when they meet in Destin in the spring, they might take a look at it. They may take a look at it. And Philip Former had said it, you know, he's in favor of it. He thinks it's been needed. He, he would love to have it. Third down and 10 for Schaefer and company. Brent drops at that time. And now he runs out of time and out of space. Love. Nose tackle made the stop. But Darius Love. Back to wound up losing a yard. There's big uh, Love. Louisiana Tech able to get pressure on this backup offensive line. Good protection, long enough for Schaefer to be able to find a receiver, but Louisiana Tech does a good job of covering in the secondary. 12-16 remaining. Tennessee has taken a timeout here in this homecoming matchup with the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech takes on Fresno State next, and then they play Auburn. You're watching college football on CSS which is your source for Southeast sports. Again, James Wilhoyt will attempt a 51-yard field goal. He punted, quick kick, and ooh, almost worked. Almost got it inside the five-yard line. 12 minutes and eight seconds remaining in the contest. Louisiana Tech takes over on the 20-yard line. Cubic. In the pocket, fires low for his intended receiver, incomplete. Jonathan Holland was out there, but that's a little off mark. Tennessee's going to be facing a great running attack and a pretty decent passing attack in Auburn. Giving up some yardage in these first three games. Run-wise, they're going to have to play better defense against Auburn. I, think. I would agree, and I think in this ball game, I think they were hitting the mouth, but I think they've responded well. Here in the second half, they've only given up 65 total yards of offense. It is a great turnaround. Passes complete up to about the 34-yard line. Auburn has got a very good defense as well. We must point that out, too. I think Auburn is one of the best success stories of this short football season, considering what their program went through. Yeah, the turmoil, the in turmoil the at Auburn. Yeah, they lost exactly. a lot of players. They lost several key players to the NFL draft. Corey Brazil was the receiver on that line. Here's the handoff and nothing doing this time to Moats. They're pretty well shutting Moats down here in the last quarter and a half, especially. He had a great first half, and that's some spark here in the second half, but Tennessee, I think, is... Well, they've been stringing him out toward the sidelines, and Tennessee's got such great team speed. It's hard to get outside when you try to take a long, sweeping run. And, and a thing like Moats, defending Moats, the more you see him, the more you know how to play him. I think Tennessee initially had to get a look at how he runs, how he finds his step back lane. They've seen that. They're playing it well. So second down and about nine yards to go for a first. Cubic in the shotgun, throws and throws behind his intended receiver, Eric Newman. Tennessee getting to play quite a few players, a lot of different uh, guys in the lineup right now that haven't had much action at all this year. Kubik's numbers right there. Not bad. Remember, he was the second string quarterback coming into this game, but Donald Allen got hurt in the early minutes of the game. Left, and Kubik, I think, has done a very good job. Done a very, you're exactly right. He, he has performed very well. Works out of the shotgun. Gets tremendous pressure, but gets his pass away incomplete. Intended for Ryan Moats coming out of the backfield. Tennessee getting pressure really good, real well now in the past few series on quarterback. John Chavis continuing to bring pressure. And the thing I like about the Tennessee coaches at this point in the ballgame, they're continuing to coach. They're continuing to scheme and utilize this time to help their players develop and grow. There's an example, shouting some instructions on the sideline. Johnny Chavis, the 
defense and coordinator. Corey Larkins will drop deep. Matt Butler's kicking on the night. 42-yard Edwards. Long one has been 53 yards. Butler is standing on his 20. And it's off a pretty good kick, which Larkins will feel. And he juggled it for a second and went nowhere to go. He's nailed in his tracks. Kind of thought Ames was done for the night, but not so. And off in the middle to Gerald Riggs. And as you see, Bulldogs waiting for that. Nothing happening. No, no yardage. Riggs, though, and uh, Houston both have looked very good tonight. Been a super night for Houston. Eric Young, the freshman in at right tackle. Rich Gandy. Chuck Crew, David Ligon, those are some of the guys, and Stephen Jones, entire different unit in there now for Tennessee on offense. Here's a nice run outside and all the way up to the Zero Ridge up to the 45 yard line. To you, when he gets a step on you in the, in the secondary, he can really motor. Jamal Cage, I believe, is an injured player down. We'll take a Look at him in a moment. Good blocking by the backup offensive line. A good job of, by Gerald Riggs of allowing the play to develop. Yeah, waited for the block. He, he did. That little stutter step allowed the play to develop, and he's through the seam. Eric Ainge at quarterback now with an entirely different offensive line up front. Number two unit operating. I think that's David Holbrook. It is the fullback, the freshman fullback from Nashville. It's one yard. Jabari Davis is now in at tailback. Schaefer Ainge comparisons on the night. Ainge uh, with some gaudy numbers up there tonight. But Schaefer has played very well also. Ainge pitches back to Davis and runs out of real estate. 42 to 17. Got only one yard. Ball's leading. It fell behind early in this ball game and just kind of gradually, I guess you could say, woke up. I'm playing pretty well, though, especially in the second half. A bigger Tennessee, though, Terrence has got a big advantage in depth in this game tonight. Big advantage in depth, although when you look at Louisiana Tech's starting defense and offensive team, they have a lot of seniors. Nowhere to go for Jabari. Ruffins was the defensive end who made the stop. Zero yardage on that one. For instance, Tennessee's used about nine receivers tonight, and I think Louisiana Tech's gone basically with their starters all night. Cosby, Holland, Franklin. Team meetings tomorrow night, of course. All right, here is the kick by Colquitt. It's a mile high. Going to be fielded. And nowhere to go for Corey Brazil. Very well covered by Tennessee. Good coverage by the Tennessee coverage team. Chris Brown on the tackle. Another freshman. And yeah, we've seen quite a few freshmen in, in action and we're going to see more. 43 yards on the kick. First down and 10 to go for Louisiana Tech. But you know, if you're Tennessee, not a whole lot of time to celebrate this win. No. No time, really. Not, not with the Tigers of Auburn coming from the plane. Kubik throws out the flat incomplete. Intended for Dave. Defended by Jonathan Wade. I tell you what, Louisiana Tech doesn't have much time to think about this this loss tonight because they've got to turn right around and play one of the hot teams in America, Fresno State. And then they come back after that and play Auburn. Auburn. <laughs> Boy, their old theory, play anybody, anywhere, anytime, is really true. 
Kubik operates out of the shotgun for the Bulldogs. Gets some pressure and gets his pass away and completes it to Davis. Davis is downed up around the 28-yard line. He'll cover about seven yards. Kubik is hobbling off the field. Well, I don't know what they will do at this point because we have no other quarterbacks listed on the depth chart, so they will find somebody in here, I'm sure. But there is Kubik coming off the sidelines. It is going to be champion, I guess. Zach Champion. Well, they're running out of quarterbacks. And there is Kubik. Should be some injury around the calf. Boy, they're they're way down on their depth chart. Uh, Big Nail believes that Champion has the tools to be a great quarterback, but he's still trying to fully grasp the offensive system. Well, this is not a good time to grasp it right here when you're down 42 to 17 and a little over six minutes to go. He says, Howard, but once the light goes on, he's going to be very good. <laughs> well, let's see if the light goes on. He goes to the shotgun, stands up, fires, and got his man out there. It's complete. That's so the way his to first start. pass, yeah, that's a confidence builder right there. Davis, the receiver, got five yards on him. Seneca Chambers, who's had a pretty good night. And, and you would think, you would think based on the history at the quarterback position at Law Tech, that they know how to develop a quarterback. This is the first play for him this season, so if they had any idea of redshirt, that's now gone. Champion is back looking for a win, and there is none, and no receivers are open, and he goes down. It was Xavier Mitchell who made the hit. Lost four. He actually redshirted in 2003. So he's already gone through that. Huh? He's already gone through that. He, he's thrown to the five. Xavier Mitchell, by the way, is a 6'3", 248-pound freshman. There he is. Four sacks Tennessee has on the night. Balls have sacked quarterback four times for 39 yards lost. Champion getting pressure, getting lots of pressure. Way too much for him. Antonio Reynolds, yet another youngster in there. Freshman. And now it is a second down and third down and 15 situation. Antonio Reynolds has a great future, the coaches believe. Good push by the Tennessee, young Tennessee defensive line. Good play by Antonio Reynolds. Antonio Reynolds came in here with Hefty as classmates. Champion fires long and incomplete. Juggled it on the sideline. Jonathan Holland may have had it for a split second, but couldn't control it. And Inky Johnson on the coverage. One more freshman we <laughs> keep mentioning, huh? Evidently, they're not going to redshirt many of them. Huh? I, you know what? I, I, I think redshirting in Tennessee is a, is a lost start, almost, unless you have a player that has an injury. Maybe offensive linemen. You know, those guys sometimes need a little extra strength and another year of growth. C.J. Faith becomes the third Tennessee punt returner tonight. Butler's kick is away, and Faith is chasing it over. And cradles it in. Has to turn up the sidelines, but runs out of room and into too many white shirts. Tennessee will take over, though. Balls leading 42 to 17. You're watching college football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Tennessee quarterback Rick Clawson has come in now to quarterback the balls. He falls down after he hands off to David Yancey. David's first carry of the night is good for about four yards. David Yancey made a name for himself in spring practice. There's Rick Clawson, of course, the younger brother of Casey, Jr. 
Craig Clawson, along with C.J. Leak, handled the decision by Philip Fulmer to start the freshman really, really well. As well as you can be handled. It was a beautiful job by both of them. Here's Clawson giving off to David Yancey. Yancey can't find that corner because the Bulldogs are all over him. And Rick Clawson said, you know, I'm going to continue to practice and approach the games just like I was a starter because you never know what's going to happen in college football. Well, we've seen two, the two quarterbacks tonight for Louisiana Tech go down. Exactly. That's what you call pounding the rock. Cedric Houston of 160. Gerald Riggs, 116. Wow. What a night. Lawson spins, pitches out. It is Yancey getting around the corner a little bit this time and getting some pretty good room. Nice running by David Yancey. Windbush made the stop. He moved the chains. He got eight yards. Good pitch by Rick Claus, and that's a difficult thing to do, especially when you're a left-handed quarterback. Yancey showing why. He came on here as a walk-on, but now he is on scholarship. They like this youngster. They like the way he plays very hard. Lawson keeps it and turns up field, and there's nothing there. I think that was a busted play. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't look too happy carrying that ball, did he? No. Rick, Rick said, oh, I went the wrong way. Got one yard. Let's see. Yeah, they <laughs> missed the handoff. I don't know if Rick went the wrong way or if David Yancey went the wrong way. Second down and nine. This time the handoff is clean, but the pickup is not much. David Yancey threw for a couple before Love makes the stop. Two-yard gain. Brings up a third and seven. Clock is ticking away. The scoreboard is correct now. At times, it has not been tonight. Time was kept on the field for a while, but it is correct. And we have 133 and running. Lawson brings his team up. And it looked like either motion or a bulldog fell into that neutral zone. He did. Ladarius Love fell in and I think made contact with Chuck Proof. Dead ball. Offsides on a 9-3 on the defense. Five yards. Remains third down. Just got tilted a little too forward and couldn't stop. Bob, if you're if you're si winningest active coaches max, uh, minimum of 10 years and Philip Fulmer sits on top 80 percent Bobby Bowden Joe Paterno's pretty big name right and Philip Fulmer sometimes takes some criticism about being conservative but he said you know I'll put my numbers against anybody's in the business and, and there you see the proof David Yancey with some good running down to the 35-yard line. Five running backs tonight. Five tailbacks have performed for Tennessee. Got nine yards on that carry. Another look. Good blocking by this backup offensive line and good hard running by David Yancey. Boy, what a luxury when you have a stable of running backs like this and a stable of receivers like Tennessee has. Lawson gives it off to Yancey. Down for pretty good gain. Again, it is Ladarius Love, who's made a lot of tackles in the second half. But it's a seven-yard pickup for Yancey. You know, for Tennessee, it's good to play, to get into your, your depth like that and play the number of players they play for a number of reasons. One is for the experience. Another one is that these kids, when they come to practice on Monday, they're excited. They're listening to the coaches because they were able to actually play in the game and see it at real speed. Well, Tennessee just lets the clock run out. McNeil and Fulmer meet at midfield and shake hands. Tennessee gets a very impressive win, 42 to 17. Came away after falling behind to start this ball game. Shockingly, came in as a 24-point favorite, but then Houston and Riggs really turned it on. Ainge had some good plays at quarterback. Schaefer came up with a touchdown pass. Still
still a few question marks about the defense, but a solid, solid win for Tennessee.